Is Zawat a new shirt I see before Z? Why, yes it is, Daniel. Where have we been this last month? Working on these bad boys. We've been working on fine shirts in collaboration with many talented artists. We have here... We have here... The Wonderful Doom by Dan Hitt, an artist we've covered many a time on our blog. And... And we've got Rollis by Corey Lewis, which... A.K.A. Ray. 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 Which is a nice mashup of Samus, Mega Man, and Roll all together. Uh, no, I think you get mad respect if you wear these shirts. That's Chips true. Lovely. And you support the blog known as The Awesome Robo. Just a so You put money in our pockets, and the money in our pockets goes to feed our starving children. Now, theme song. Theme song! Set one. Chicky, chicky, chicky. Two. Chicky, chicky, chicky. Three. Chicky, chicky, chicky. Four. Chicky, chicky, chicky. YouTube. So, welcome to episode 10. Now that we've described where we, like what we've been up to for the last month, why we haven't done a podcast, this whole shirt creation process turned out to be a ton more work than we expected. A huge learning curve. Mm. A huge place. learning curve. We, uh, we kind of soft opened the store last week and... Uh, a couple weeks ago. Was it? Yeah. In a couple weeks. Are you sure it was in last week? After it feels like last week. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things things are going well. You know, pick up a shirt if you haven't already. They're good. We don't know how they much longer good. they'll last, so. They are mm -hmm. limited edition. Like we've mentioned in past podcasts, we're not going to be doing these ones forever. Hopefully, well, the, the plan is to have these ones. Some of the proceeds then go into funding the next shirts, the which next are shirt. also in our store. Mark we, is coming soon. Yeah, we've worked with a total of six artists, and, uh... Thus far. Thus far. And the the plan, I don't know if it's going to work, is that the shirts before it fund the shirt after it. So, and so the money we make on these shirts will fund the next two shirts, and so on and so on, until our goal, which is in October, to take all the shirts to a convention and start getting our word out. So, let's see how it goes, guys. So, with your help... With your help. This is PBS. The more you know. Do -do -do -do. Be us. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I mean, look at these. 100% cotton, four colors. Free shrunk. Shirt. Yeah. And that's about it. Daniel doesn't have one yet. We haven't figured out how to send stuff overseas. Which uh, we're working on. Um, the Queen. I'm, I'm sure you can post. You can put one on me and post. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll do After Effects, actually. There you go. So I'll turn your face, I'll turn it into a mesh and overlay the designs. You know what would have been a good idea? If I just print, got a printout and just stuck it over the shirt, a piece of paper, that would have been a good guy. Yeah, it would, have been, it would have been great, actually. Yeah. We want to send it to Daniel, but the Queen has put down some new tariffs and, uh, uh... So fuck that. What not. So, it's extremely difficult to send him stuff. Actually, it's the, uh, it's her birthday soon, it's a jubilee, so... It's a jubilee tax, uh... Yeah. It's making it very difficult for us to send him anything right now. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. No, but in all seriousness, as far as international shipping goes, we've already had a few people email us saying, hey, let us know when you're going to do international shipping, because I'm not in the U.S., and I don't plan on being so anytime soon, so you were, we're, we're working oh, on it. Oh, yeah. I thought you yeah. said you are okay. Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah. Um, it's in the works. So what's, the what's happened since then? You know, our blog's been nice and healthy. Uh, everyone's been kind of busy, so... With various mm. projects. With various projects, so we've been doing our best to keep it updated as much as we can. Uh, there's E3 coming up, that's been pretty crazy to organize, you know, it's just like, there's just so much going on right now. Um, mm. So talk a little bit about E3, e this year compared to last year, as far as how interested people are in us now. Yeah, um, so last year, you know, it was our first time going to E3 as a, as a blog. Uh, and 
Nobody we knew didn't us. really know anybody, and they, know nobody really knew us. So the mm. goal last year was to go out and kind of like tell all the developers, "Hey, we exist. We'd love to cover your stuff if we haven't covered it already." And this year, it's just been like they've come to us. Effing crazy, like unbelievable. I'm getting spammed with emails of people wanting to schedule like appointments with us. Like, no need to boast about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, just saying. No, 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 I'm just saying. Like, people have been calling me at, like on my personal phone number at work, try, trying to get me, trying to schedule me for stuff. I'm like, oh, we've got like an awesome demo for NBA Baller Beats. There's gonna be an NBA superstar there. We want you to be there. I'm like. I'm at work, I was in the middle. I'm at work. I, they, they think we're a company, you know? But, well, we yeah. are. In the making. Well, in yeah, in yeah, the making. We, in the we're making. getting that. But it was just, like, overwhelming this year, because yeah. mm. having to schedule appointments with people and all that, but we, we, we're, we like, completely set up. We're, we're booked for nearly three days, like, start to finish. Last year, we were just wandering around, like, talking to developers, handing out business cards or whatnot. This year, yeah, we got invited by all the big developers. Me and Chris are going to be there. Uh, so we'll be we'll be covering the event. I mean, I I couldn't make it, so no Britishness for me. Aww. Unfortunately, we do not have the uh, the, the jubilee tax. Also applies mm. to travel. Damn it. Couldn't afford the plane ticket. No, your t-shirts will help contribute to the um, down to E three two thousand and fifteen <laughs> fund. So. Bring down to the U S fund. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're all booked for E three. That's happening next yeah. week. Um, any um, any big announcements from that from us? Any any kind of a we uh, well, we did get invited actually to the Nintendo press conference. Um, so we're really looking forward. They're going to announce uh, you know just a rumor here just between us. You know there there might be a Don't Mario tell. game announced. Okay, it might be called New Super Mario Brothers again. I'm thinking Miyamoto might know. announce it. I don't know. I'm so I don't excited. Know. Yeah, I just don't want to spoil it. I also heard rumors about uh, Mario Kart. Number what? Mario 32? Party. Uh, 45. Just, just lots of new games coming out from the Nintendo camp. Half-Life 3. Half-Life 3 by Nintendo. Uh, Halo Miyamoto's five. working on it. Halo 4 on the Wii U. Wii U? Wee -woo. Wee -woo. Duke Nukem. No. Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna. You mean never ever release a new Duke Nukem? No, that series is done no. for. It's done for. I actually was looking forward to that game for twelve years. Did you uh, get it? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Did it's you absolutely play? terrible. So. Did you, yeah, I never saw you play it. <laughs> you did. You just wouldn't have. Ne you wouldn't have been able to tell. So. Oh, uh, okay. If you saw me playing something that had really shitty graphics and. Terrible mm. scripted sequences and looked unfinished, then, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it had poop jokes, so... Huh? Had, had what? It had poop jokes. Boob jokes. Boob had jokes. poop jokes, boob jokes. Everything a, uh, a grown man wants. Who doesn't like a good poop joke? Mm. I sat in the uh, Duke Nukem throne last year. I was surrounded by hot chicks. Ooh. Proudest hey, moment, I, moment I, of my gaming career. What? I heard stories about um, trying to get in there and people kind of almost walking out as soon as they went in and they uh, started to play the game and how disappointed they really were. I know, but... We should have saw. We but hey, Ken, you know what? Time. You know what? It's not 2011. This man does not live in the past. I do not live in the past. He lives in the future. I move on. We British people, we live in the past. You dwell. We I'm going to call you the dwell. Necro Podcaster. Because you always bring back stuff from the past to haunt us again. <laughs> He's the ghost of blogs past, of yeah. gaming past. Mm. So what about the Torchlight 2 giveaway we did, speaking of video games, right? Mm. We did a we did a Torchlight 2 giveaway on the blog, and... Uh, overwhelming response. I, I had overwhelming that response and overwhelming disappointment at... Uh, <laughs> reading comprehension. At reading comprehension for our, for our readers. Despite saying we only have 20 keys, Eight despite keys. saying that we had a deadline, We're still people are messages. still spamming my email inbox asking for a key. And... In all fairness, we do appreciate 
the participation. No, I, I appreciate it, but when appreciate people, it. but people also need to pay attention. Started calling us scammers because they didn't get a key. A key in a in a thing that was labeled as a giveaway lottery. We had twenty keys, and the twenty people who won got it. Yeah. People just didn't read. They just went straight to the comment section and. Blah blah. Blah blah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. But. Um. And also, next time we do the giveaway, make sure you put your email address. Yeah. I yeah. know. <laughs> you don't put your email address. Like how are we supposed to let you know? Yeah. I mean, actually, people went as far as to post uh, our website on uh, the Runa Games forums, like, We're like the developer forums, scam yeah. and saying, like, is this a scam? Is this for real? <laughs> but actually, a developer, a person who works there said, guys, this is legit. Stop. I know the guy. Stop trying to be smart. Let's stop I know trying those to. People. Yeah. Because, fun fact, I actually worked at Runa Games. So. Dun, dun, dun. That's how we got the keys! I don't know. But the game, like, every single beta key giveaway I've heard about, Torchlight 2, has been. Has resulted in a disaster. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, we we did it though. I mean, we, we did it properly. We yeah. we gave out the keys. We yeah. It's just that people just didn't see the update that said submissions are now over. No more. Yeah, no more. Whatever. No more. Yeah. yeah. Next time, yeah. pay attention, kids. Yeah. Right now, to finger too. Whatever. I wag my finger at you. <laughs> so how was Kapow? And uh, speaking of conventions, yeah. I, yeah, no, we just got back from Kapow, which was a, which is basically the, uh... uh they're Comic-Con. trying to make it into the, uh, big British Comic-Con, um, San Diego Comic-Con, whether it works or not. Mm-hmm. Who knows? No, it, it was fun. I mean, um, I was grateful for the invite. Um, I've still got some coverage coming up. Um, should be finished by the end of the week. So by the time this uh, comes out, you guys should have seen a few posts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, is but, it, is it, uh, who's it presented by? I remember Capel. And Mark Miller. Mark Miller, yeah. Yeah. King of the um, King of the Group Rape. King of the Group Rape? What? H- have you not read Kick Ass 2? Oh, no, no, no. Of course. No. Oh, uh, it, uh, it uh, there's a scene with Group Rape and urination and kids getting shot. So here's, yeah. here's the funny thing why would you assume that we would know that? I, I assume you read comic books, so... Not about group writing. So Mark Miller... Like, so, got Kapow, organizers, <laughs> I know you guys are watching this. Mark Miller is the king of group rape. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Apparently. Well, you read uh, Nemesis, so... Oh, well. Let's yeah. not go into inside jokes there. But, uh... <laughs> so, Kapow is basically the London-based Comic-Con, and you were there as, uh... You went there as a um, press coverage guy. Yeah, I mean, um, I've got some interesting stuff coming out, uh, possibly a few giveaways, we'll see how that goes. Um, a review or two, a few more photographs. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just look forward to that coming up, because it's going to be good, wow. my friends. This must be the Vegas review of a con- convention ever. It was great. Well, I, the, to, in my opinion, last year was, uh, they had a lot bigger panels, you had the four panel... Um, that other panel I went to, the Green Lantern panel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They all spring to memory. They didn't have an Avengers and panel? No, well, the Avengers has been released, so they yeah. didn't need to advertise one of the biggest selling films of all time. Timing wise. I guess so. I, I, I think they would have maybe a post mortem or something like that. Yeah. I mean, they had uh, Chris. Hemsworth? Hemsworth. Um, they had him presenting the full panel itself last year. And they had about 40 minutes worth of footage, so obviously that was fairly big. I mean, we had to hand in all our cameras, we couldn't report on any of it. The big sites could, but... That sucks. So, I mean, I didn't get reporting to that, because everyone else beat me to it, but... I mean, yeah, like... Yeah, I mean, this year I decided to go more towards the independent route, so we've got a lot of uh, great independent comic reviews coming up. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say... Uh, last year, we, I mean, we didn't really have any... Well, you can agree with me, we didn't have an objective last year. Yeah. Last year, it was just, we got an invite, let's go for it, spread yeah. our name about. Whereas this year, we had more of an agenda, so... Yeah. Um, I, I think our, our general approach to covering conventions, uh, you know... I mean, we're, I mean, a, we're a volunteer-run group. Mm-hmm. We're not going to be able to compete with, like, IGN or... 
no. Spike, or any of these guys who are streaming these events live. So, for example, when I'm going to go to E3, I'm going to look for the developers that are just, like, not covered. Like the small hmm. indie guys who are trying to pitch their games or whatnot. Uh, like last year, for example, our biggest find was Skullgirls. Yeah. Hmm. And this was before it was picked up by Konami. Like, I found them in a corner of E3. They had one Xbox set up where you could test, like, an alpha version of the game. And I was like, whoa. That's cool. This is pretty exciting, guys. You know, I, so so that's kind of what our stance has been. Like, we're not yeah. gonna, we're not going to focus on like Modern Warfare Four, you know, Black Ops Two, these big games. Enough coverage. Yeah. If the game has like a cool art direction, mm. you know, or is trying to do something new, that's when it gets our interest. If it's just another sequel, Boo. I feel like yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Daniel, you, you don't mind sequels as much. You know, you like Assassin's Creed, but I'm. I don't mind sequels, but I mean, ever since I've uh, started work with you guys, I've started to uh, now in my start to um, extend, uh, extend my horizon. I think is the best way of putting it. I mean, this year I've got some some great, great stuff, um, independent stuff, and I mean, I don't want to go too much into detail in some of the stuff I've got. Um, because some of it would take about 20 minutes to explain with the art oh, direction. Okay, well, we but one of my favorite yeah. pieces, um, I don't have it on hand with me, which is particularly helpful, but it's a music, a musical comic yeah, based around kind of like a musical. Um, I'll send you a video about it later, actually, but it's basically presented in the form of a musical. It has a built-in music box. So as you, tell, you follow the kind of like music box, as it plays to music, so, uh, so it's like a comic book that's got a music book. Music yeah, box. Yeah, it's a music box. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's probably one of my favorite. I again, it was just something I found in the corner that's of awesome. uh, Kapow in the um, artist lane, and they were just pitching their idea to people, and they were just showing it to them, but no one was buying it. And I was just kind of sat there going, "How can you not buy such a cool little item yeah. like that? I've never seen anything like it." Yeah, yeah. In the comic industry, and I mean, especially when everything's uh, getting so... I can't think of the right word of it, but... I mean, it's... The main... The main big companies are... Um, what have we got? Avengers vs. X-Men. Another fucking reboot for the DC Universe. Yeah, okay, okay, you mean they're playing, it's, it's, they're playing it safe. They're not... Yeah, they are yeah. playing it safe. And I mean, that's the wrong thing to do, especially when comic sales are at an all-time low. Kids aren't going to read comic books, they're going to see the big movies, because they don't have to imagine it in their heads anymore, they're seeing it on the screen. Yeah. yeah. Like, to me, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, like, in the last few months, you know, we've been discovering all this, this new generation. Hmm. Like, let's just call them the Generation Y. Yeah. Folks. like... They're making their own comics, they're self-publishing their stuff. They go to these conventions and they get their word out, like the Scott Pilgrim guy. You know, he yeah. he started off at conventions until some, like, movie producer basically noticed this stuff. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing him in Seattle a few years ago before he had even, like, become a big thing. And I'm like, gosh, this guy's got a cool style. It's like, it's like American comic and Japanese comics hybridized. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's a new generation, I think. You know, all the artists we worked with on our T-shirt line, for example, mm. they're taking the same approach. You know, they're just publishing their own stuff and getting big via social media. You know, like on Twitter, Tumblr, etc. Uh, it's kind of encouraging, actually, that people don't need like, you know, these big corporate entities to get their work out anymore. But it's cheap enough to do it on your own. You can go out and do it on your own. And yeah, at this not point. At this point, it's not that. Point, yeah. I mean, one of the comics um, I'm going to be doing a review of, uh, Lovely Guys, uh, it's called Twisted Dark. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it's a very morbidly told bunch of stories based in real life. It's You would love it, Serio. You would love it. Oh, I would. Okay. Morbid. Yeah. He loves yeah. it. Wow, you're, making, you're jumping to conclusions yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> But no, um, it's all self-published. It's a graphic novel collection. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's got coverage from a few sites, but it's something I'm surprised that hasn't been covered more, because... Yeah. Well, and I'm going to say, like, um, with Iron Sky, see oh. how ham-fisted that transition was there. 
But with I'm Scott. That was a that horrible was a, transition. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, that was done on an indie budget. Uh, well, before before we go into it. Was it independently released? Before we go into it, though. Yeah. Is, you're transitioning into a movie called Iron Sky. Yeah. All right. What is Iron Sky for those unaware? Uh, we've talked about it a few times in the blog. It's uh, Nazis on the Moon. guys anyway. Nazis. So the plot, okay, Dan, Daniel's talking about uh, a movie we covered quite a few times because the premise is so bizarre but interesting in which after World War II basically a group of Nazis migrated to the dark side of the moon to rebuild with no, no context of what was happening on earth and the idea is that they come back and invade the Earth. I don't know how many decades mm. later this inbred like Nazi army. But it's uh, 2018. <laughs> it's 2018. Wow. Yeah. Right. So Jalen. It's coming up, guys. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so you got to, you got a chance to watch it because it was released on. Yeah, the um, it got released today, but my copy arrived Friday, so. Oh, we got I early. Watching it over and over a weekend. Yeah. So what did We're you think? Jealous. I'm jealous. Yeah, because it, it didn't get yeah. a release date. It didn't, it didn't get released mm. at all. So. Really? I should go. Okay. It's maybe it's not very limited edition. Actually, release. they've been um, they had coverage for it at Capel, and they've got posters all over the place in the UK. So mm. they're really amping the release of them. I oh, so good. Really? So good. The film is um, it it met my expectations Did and more. Them? Yeah. Mm. Well, the idea kind of like is about the um, Nazis being on the dark side of the moon. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of like, um, it goes with that idea, and it kind of goes with every, it does everything you expect it to do and more. You know, you do you kind of like uh, spend a lot of time on the moon, and it does open with the Americans kind of like uh, doing another space mission for publicity for um, Sarah Palin, look like. Oh, yeah. They kind of like, uh, yeah, the president is basically, they don't call her by name at any one point, but it's obviously meant it's to be obvious. Sarah Palin. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so for kind of like uh, to get her re-elected for a second term, they send a um, space mission to the moon, which is where they discover the dark side of the moon and Nazis. <laughs> that sounds actually really fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean it. It actually has quite a serious message at the end, which kind of becomes a bit ham-fisted, but not in a kind of like um, a way that you're kind of sad. They're going well. That was an awkward ending. It works, mm -hmm. but it it like I feel like a lot of Hollywood films they don't concentrate on what you particularly want to see. I mean, in this film, you want to see the space Nazi base, and then you want to see them on Earth, and then you want to see a space invasion. Yeah. yeah. Where it's kind of like sometimes I find it kind of like the big films they skip over the big parts where it's like they spend like five minutes on the base and then the rest of it on Earth because it's yeah. cheaper to do it that way. Right. They do spend like a significant time in the space, but... It, I, I think it's because you're, dealing, you're think... dealing with space Nazis here. I mean, if, yeah. you're, if you're dealing really with like... Space Nazis. Yeah, if you're dealing with like generic American base, yeah. then people are like, okay, I know what happens. They're training and whatever. But yeah. if you're talking about space Nazis, I can understand why they'd want to spend <laughs> a little more time saying oh, like, yeah. what the fuck is going on here? Why? But it, how do these guys train? Like, what do they have? What are their weapons? I mean, that I can't really get into it without getting into uh, too spoilers. much spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah, but the whole idea is um, they still are using the technology from the nineteen forties. So when they discover we actually kind of like um, have a computer, <laughs> rather than kind of like one that takes up the entire room, but it's a mobile phone ah. that can basically power their base. <laughs> Blows Except, their mind. Like, they send like a couple of soldiers to get mobile phones from the Earth, <laughs> so they can use it to power their base. Who then get picked up by Sarah Palin to run her campaign, and then you get Sarah Palin basically doing the big Hitler speeches. Jeez. Well, yeah. <laughs> we are venturing into spoiler territory. So yeah, let's no, no, no. This that is out like a, uh, yeah. Uh, and then there's. I really want to talk about the ending. The ending, um, let's just say there's a pedestal Galactica reference or two. 
Interesting. Okay. Can I get into it? Alright. Okay. We, well, whereas Daniel was lucky enough to watch Iron Sky, we got to watch, uh, we really wanted to go watch a movie recently. Uh, we've watched a ton of movies in the last few weeks, but I think some of them are too old hat at this point to, to mention. discuss. But let's talk about this weekend. Um, um, so we had a chance did, to watch did Battleship. Say. Or Men in Black 3. Which one? Which one's new? Battleship! <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to watch another fucking sequel to Men in Black, so uh, we said fuck it, let's go into Battleship, it's got terrible reviews, but you never know, right? Um, oh. And that movie was actually pretty surprisingly decent. entertaining, yeah. Yeah. Damn it! Oh. Alright, so the movie kind of focuses around a uh, talented guy. With no direction. With no direction. Or ambition. Who kind of, yeah, kind of gets pressured into joining the Navy after the chicken burrito fuck up thing that he does to impress a girl. I Anyways. pretty much spoil, but yeah. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> and he just finds himself like I guess he climbs the ranks or whatever. Somehow, yeah. Yeah, it just skips that entire part. It just skips like a year later. He's like at the top of the ranks. He's doing well. Doing well. <laughs> And during like a like a, some sort of like international navy exercise, exercises, yeah. The Earth gets invaded by aliens. But here's the funny part about the movie. Um, okay, possible spoilers. Possible spoilers if you guys even fucking care. Spoiler right now. We're warning you. So the entire premise of the movie is that we have discovered a, another planet that's basically similar to Earth. Very similar to Earth. Okay. So we decide to set up a bunch of satellites send signals. to send signals to make contact with these guys. Hopefully. Yeah. What this results in is that the aliens, you know, who turns out live on a very ravaged, uninhabitable planet. They find the signal. They find the signal and they come to Earth. So we basically lure them to Earth. And then once they get there... They look to colonize, but... They look to colonize, but they don't mean any harm on any humans. And that's very clearly explained in the movie. Like, yeah. every time an alien, like, faces a normal human or whatever... A non-aggressive... A non-aggressive human... Who it's always visualized through the alien's perspective as being green. Yeah, if you're... Okay? If you're highlighted as green, it means you're non-hostile, and they don't attack. They don't attack. Everything that they've done was defensive. Completely defensive. All defensive. So they land in the middle of the sea, and they only get aggressive when the Navy ships start to fire on them. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so you're just like... <laughs> so the the aliens were never hostile. And as a result, you just kind of end up feeling bad for them the entire time, because they're just getting... Can I... Can yeah. I interject with uh, something here? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Um... With the Avengers, the Navy didn't want to appear in that film because they thought they were being badly represented. But yet, here they're being represented as egotistical, shoot first, ask question later kind of assholes, and they're completely fine with that. Yeah, what? Like, I yeah, know, the just... whole incident is like. I don't think the. Mo I don't know. You know, obviously that's how. The story was portrayed in the movie that the aliens were not hostile, they were not aggressive, that everything they did was different. They, they were trying, all they were trying to do is get off a planet that had been ravaged by war, and they get the signal saying, hey, come here. There's, this is a fine planet. But I, I kind of wonder if that was the movie's intention, was to make you feel bad for the aliens. Because, you know, you get... It makes no sense. I, you know, without spoiling too much, just get it, and once, you know, we got to the end credits, it really seemed like... They tried to be more of a straightforward, aliens come, they are bad, they are killed, yay, mm. like... I don't know, you kind of wonder if that underlying mm. tone of, oh man, you should kind of feel bad for them, it's kind of fucked up. I don't know. I don't know. It was, it, it was interesting. Um, that was our take on it, maybe that was just our take on no, it. No, that was... Mm. That was not our fucking take on it, because... They couldn't have been more clear in terms of, like, when you get aggressive with us, we have to defend ourselves. Yeah. Remember? No, so. I, no I, I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying, but... It's... But there's a the funny part of the movie, they also uh, 
have to figure out how to fire on the aliens without them noticing because they have such high high tech ships. It That's... goes into a sequence which looks exactly like the Battleship board game. They figure out how to <laughs> make it look exactly like that with the grid and whatever. And the alien ships actually fire pegs, so that cracked me up. I was like, why do these why do these fucking alien ships fire champagne bottles at people? See, I've never played Battleship, so I didn't catch the reference. Alright, so you have a bunch of pegs and you try to strike the other person's sure, ship. And you say, you sunk my battleship. Whatever. They were actually physically firing pegs that blew up, that blow up, that little, stick to your ship and explode. It's probably so. a little tongue in cheek. Oh. It was a tongue in cheek, but. Silly. But here's a funny story. Like, when we were at actually E3 last year, uh, we went to Universal on the last day after, you know, the convention was over. And we did the Universal Studio Tour, which takes you into actual. Uh, Sets. Hollywood sets for Universal, and at one point during the tour, they stopped and they were like, uh, "Well, here are the newly established Hasbro offices for developing their board games into movie IPs." And I remember, I remember just, you know, telling uh, the person next to me, like, "Yeah, they're gonna make a Battleship movie, yeah. right? <laughs> right? Yeah, whatever." But they actually made it work. They made it work. So, it did uh, work. It was fun. It was fun. Best movie ever? No. No. But it was fun. Liam Neeson, mm. Rihanna, a oh, yeah. bunch of interesting cast choices too, but yeah. honestly nobody was offensive. It was, it was all pretty well, it was actually pretty it well acted, believable, I thought. Actually, you know, you know, when you first see Rihanna, you're like, oh, it's Rihanna. Actually, she was pretty believable. I no, she, 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 did, heard... she didn't go diva. She was just like... She played her part well. She you played for, her part. You forgot who she was and actually believed in the She's character. just a Navy person. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys, you know, want to check it out, I, I, I'd recommend, recommend it, it, I think. I would, I would actually recommend it. Yeah. It's interesting. I think we have a recommendation for Iron Sky as well, based off of uh, Daniel's opinion, so. Hopefully we get it. Pick it up on DVD, I guess. If we can. Yeah. I'm not sure. HD DVD. Yeah. We got Prometheus coming yeah. out next week, so I'm sure. I, I, I was going to make a um, ham-fisted uh, transition. So, um, Hasbro's other big project is Monopoly, and Monopoly is uh, supposedly Ridley Scott. Right. So, <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Have you not heard those rumors? No. No, it's not Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott is um, before he worked on Prometheus, he was actually working on Monopoly, and he's still really interested in doing the project apparently. So, so is it going to have Michael Douglas in it? Yeah. Why Michael Douglas? Well, Wall Street. Oh. Well, no, um... Oh. Yeah. Featuring yeah. The Rock as the Monopoly Man. I would watch that. I would totally watch that. Because my man. Well, if they could figure it out, sure. I'm just well, saying. Well, um, one hmm. of the big rumors was the uh, storyline was going to be about basically a Wall Street kind of situation where a man's being worked to the bone at Wall Street and then basically um, overworks himself, collapses, and wakes up in the Monopoly game. What? Where the fuck did you get this Where? rumor from? How do you end up inside a Monopoly game? That would, Cause how do you visualize that? And you collapse on Wall Street. That sounds like something that Christopher Nolan would work on. Misception. Monoception. Monoption. Monoption. Coming soon. That's 15. Near you. Yeah. But anyway, uh... <laughs> Prometheus. That's side. Prometheus is coming out next week. And... This week? Damn. Damn. Like, for real. We've been pipping the shit. How many times have we posted Prometheus stuff? I think it's one of the most posted things on Oscar. Ever, before. yeah. Like we've posted mm -hmm. every viral. At least ten times. At least. And as a result, we know so much about the plot at this point. Well, I stopped watching trailers about four weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, we've discovered stuff, okay, about androids, about the Wayland Ut was it Wayland Utani Corporation? It, yeah. Wayland like, all those virals that they released gave away little, very interesting snippets about, like, uh... Like, it kind of reminds me of the thing, in terms of, like, there's gonna be all these team members that aren't as they seem. Yeah. You know, mm. or have, like, alternate uh, motives during this mission. Because supposedly this is the origin story for the whole Aliens right. franchise or whatnot. Mm. See, that's the bit I'm least interested in. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, I want to see kind of like uh, the space jockey, like everyone else who watched Aliens or which Aliens. Basically, going, the, the ship oh, carrying that, yeah, the ship carrying uh, all the eggs, which hmm. results in the xenomorph infestation. I mean, surprise, surprise! The ships crash. The ship is launched. The ship is crashed. Ooh. Yeah. Well, to yeah. be honest, but it's in, in Prometheus, it doesn't look like it's crashed, though. That that's like well, I, I didn't Prometheus get the impression hasn't at all. crashed. It's um. It's dormant. I, I, in, the, in the movie, it's dormant. I can't. I don't know enough to kind of. I don't want to sound um, ignorant about what I know and what I don't know about the film. Hmm? So I'm not gonna really kind of go. Well, this is what I think is gonna happen. But you do have to kind of like uh, get the ship from wherever it is right now to the planet it crash lands on, to the point where they're trying to find it in Alien. So you go about, I think it's like a 20 year gap. And I don't think it'll be in the same planet and from no, the no, 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 no way. Like it does. You, you see it in the trailer. You see it taking off. Mm. Like the, yeah. So it obviously goes somewhere. the The mm. trailer seems to imply that it was supposed to go to Earth. Yeah. But something happens, and as a result, in Alien One, it crash lands somewhere else. Mm. Or either there's more of these ships. There's not only just one. But I don't know what what the deal is. Like I'm really curious to find out exactly why the space jockey's transporting this mm. ship full of eggs. Like, who does yeah, it work see, for? What are his motives? You know. Yeah. See, changed. that's what. Like I say, that's what I'm more interested in. I'm not interested in uh, seeing what the xenomorph, like, you know, um, the big alien. Yes, yeah. it's time. I mean, this movie seems to also indicate that there's parasites in it, which uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a whole scene where there, there's a guy holding something in his hand, and it goes into his eye, and mm. then you see all these weird, like hybrid, human creature people, running around in the movie, and you're like, what is that? We gotta find out. What the fuck is that? I I yeah. just can't wait to find out. But yeah, next Friday. Yeah. We'll all find um, out. Mm. This Friday. Yeah. This in Friday. UK. Oh, well, I think it's I think it's June first here too. So. Uh, June eighth in America, June first in the UK. I don't know why, but Google is telling me June first. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. But no, um, just a, a couple of reviews have come out, so I have read a couple of spoiler-free reviews. No. And I'm a bit fearful actually, because I was reading them just before we started, and uh, reaction has been mixed. What? Oh, uh, they had a big premiere, and um, I think it was in France, and a lot of reviews were either this is amazing, or it wasn't that great. I think yes. one review I read basically said it was uh, cliched, and it used every single sci-fi cliche that you could imagine to the point of frustration. But well, who the fuck makes sci-fi movies these days? No one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, okay, that's... Well, I'm just gonna be my own... I'll just judge it myself, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I, I just thought I'd, uh... Don't fuck up Ridley that. Scott. Please. God, please. We want a Monopoly movie. I know. We want it! <laughs> yeah, um... So what else has been going on? Uh... We were, we were talking right before the podcast about... Uh, Save for Work, by the way. Uh, The Penis Eating Man. The, uh... Androgynous Japanese man who he decided to cook his, own, cook his own dick. But he didn't eat it, he served it. The penis serving. Yeah, he held a party in Japan. Uh, where at? Was it Sugiyama? I think so. Where I actually um, have the news story because um, you have more info? I was reading it on my iPad before I threw up. <laughs> You're welcome! So he was an andro- he's an androgynous illustrator in terms of like he didn't want to be either male or female, he just wanted to be like. I, I don't know how you get. I don't know how you get that into that mindset. So he decided to surgically remove his junk, and then hold a party in which he cooked it up and served it to some guests for two hundred fifty dollars a plate. I'm guessing there weren't that many plates, unless safe for work pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually the flyer that he put out. That's right. Yep, yeah, that's him. But uh. Can't show you any more, folks. Yeah, supposedly, all, I think 95% of the guests showed up and actually ate what he served, which was, I think it was his, uh, his, uh, his pinus no, served five, in a white wine sauce with mushrooms. Five people. Five out of six. With a nice Chianti. 
Yeah. Five people helped gut his dick. And the rest were served, um, I think it was beef and crocodile. Our alligators. Alligator or crocodile? Yeah, so, so a ton of people showed up for the spectacle and didn't like... They didn't get to eat dick. They didn't uh, eat dick, but I'm just saying, it's like, there was no... No legal... Yeah, they couldn't... They couldn't gauge it as an illegal activity. Which is... Well, appar yeah, apparently in Japan, um, there are no laws against legal. cannibalism, according to this, so... Which seems strange. Well... But it seems good. All the Germans should move to, uh, <sighs> Wow, move okay. To Some, uh, sweeping generalizations were just made. But no, I heard another story... Oh, that's space Nazis. Yeah. That's space Nazis. So I heard another story, like, related to this, where it was like, a guy actually killed a woman, in, I think it was in France, mm. and cooked her up and ate her, and then sought refuge in Japan where it wasn't illegal, and therefore was pardoned, and he became a celebrity. And I was just like, oh boy. Thank you, society. You know, it's, one, you know, it's all pretty nasty in general, but I guess if you have a willing participant, like the guy who willingly offered his wing. I'd be more concerned about the people who uh, volunteered to eat it. Cause, uh, yeah, so, I mean... I'm like, I'm like, these people are obviously fucking cannibals, then. Mm. Like, Not necessarily. Or no. they have some sort of, like, fixation, or... No, I don't think it's necessarily... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. I, I, I mean, is it more of a curiosity it's, thing? Yeah. Like, yeah. They're not cannibals. I mean, I'm sorry, but what, what type of curiosity would you have to pay $300 to eat a piece of dick? I, like, think, it's I, some, I think it's somebody <laughs> who just has a need for out there. Mm. Of any kind of variety. Some people get their kicks in any sort of outrageous, taboo thing. I don't know. I'm just like the vibe in there must have been something. Like... Just, I don't know. It, it, just, just watch it, because the guy cooked it up himself. Yeah. He cooked it up himself. The illustrator cooked up his own junk, like live, in front of an audience. Uh, like, I mean, it's a I, performance I, piece of some sort. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure he's going to become really famous for it. I mean, live on an in infamy, right? Oh. Looks great. Uh, <laughs> so, Daniel, could you, could you uh, go over the exact menu, like uh, how, he, how he served it? Okay. So um, just uh, apparently, oh, only seventy people turned up. Only seventy. Well. Yeah, and it was two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. And only apparently five had paid the uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. Five out of six. That. So there was mm. not a lot of dick to go around. So. No. Um. A joke it doesn't have the menu from this. Um, That's okay. But um, according to this, mm -hmm. if any of you are um, still tuned in and interested, the penis sure. was rubbery, the scrotum was delivery. <laughs> and he should have seasoned it ahead of time. Yeah. Maybe like the a testicles good. were hard on the outside and glutinous on the middle. Maybe you should have tenderized a little bit, you know, like, like hammered a, it. Get a good brine or something on it. Because from the pictures I saw, uh, it was pretty, it looked like you just sliced it up. Yeah. You know, and people got well, some sections. If I didn't know this was penis, then... You wouldn't have known. No, don't! No, no, fuck you. You can't tell what <laughs> Daniel, it I can't show that shit. God! It's so blurry, no one we have to see that. Nah, nobody will know. Ah, <sighs> but you know what? It's a ham steak. Everyone has to get their rocks off somehow. Well, he, uh, Literally. Got his rocks lesson, off. lesson be learned here. For some people, it's a hamburger. For Ooh, some people, dick. it's a dick. Big fat dick. Cooked with mushrooms. Mmm. Like mushrooms. There's really no way to follow this up, though. I mean, that's just. <laughs> How oh. do you follow that? Oh, you hear about the, the guy? Um, who... we. Go ahead. Oh. I was gonna say, it make a podcast question. Would you eat a penis? If it was willingly offered. Yeah, if it was willingly said, would you All eat right, a penis? Alright, so it's okay. If a famous artist, Ow. if somebody that you really liked, how about this? If, if like a famous... Because that matters. I don't know, maybe maybe this would help. If a famous Bill musician or a film director or an actor... Whoever. ...decided to cut off their dick 
and cook it for you at a private dinner and gave you a 50% off discount on Groupon, <laughs> would you, would you RSVP? Email, email us at, uh, no, Rachel, I want, I want Rachel at awesome-robo.com. Let her know how you feel about cooking dick. So R A C H A E. Okay, if Brad Pitt's dick was served to you, Brad Pitt, this is not the with hollandaise. Well, he's probably got a lot more to offer. Like at least eight people. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson, that's a good one. I bet he has a big dick. He's tall. I'm going to serve you my penis. That didn't sound like Liam Neeson at all. But, <laughs> really didn't. All right. I, I knew where you were going, so it was a little Can you try? Can you try Liam Neeson impression? No. I'm way too... I've got a certain set of... I've got a certain set of skills. <laughs> I love it when it flies. It's impersonation hour here at Awesome Robo. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have enough... So Rachel, have you played any video games lately? Absolutely not. I've been busy with these. They're beautiful, right? Have you been playing anything, Daniel? Um, I've been playing Minecraft on the Xbox 360. I haven't played Minecraft. Oh, yeah? Just by donating it for PC. Yeah. If those guys win another indie award after this, I'm gonna say fuck that. Well, they basically said we're not an indie studio anymore, so... Because even last year, uh, I went to a uh, game developers conference. They won an indie award. Last year, after they'd sold about, I don't know how many copies, mm. like six million copies, I'm like, I don't think you guys are indie anymore. Yeah. And I remember Notch actually went up there and was kind of like scoffing. Mm. Well, I picked it up, he was like, thanks! Because it also came with a cash bonus. So. What if it, if it makes you feel any better, did you hear about the uh, SD, HD problem? Standard definition, high definition, television problem they had with game. Wow, that was really fast. Let me do that again. Cut SD, it. HD, it's <laughs> Uh, with Minecraft, uh, or...? Yeah. The, uh, standard definition problem, where, um, you can't play... Oh, local yeah. ...local multiplayer. The thing is, who, who still has... Standard. Yeah, who still has an SD TV, though? I know a lot of people who still have a standard definition. Not everyone can, uh, throw away cash on a nice-looking TV. It's a Jubilee tax. Like, it's a Jubilee it. tax, it's... It's horrible. The, the Queen is repressing us. So... Uh, you can get a free refund if you claim you have a standard definition. Yeah. But why would you want to do that? Yeah, buy an awesome Robo shirt. Yeah. There you go. Ours are, don't require That's SD. Minecraft. They don't require don't SD shirt. or HD. If you're listening this, uh, Notch, screw you, but... Buy a shirt. Buy a shirt. Buy a shirt. Because our shirts are 1080p. They look good, right? No matter who's looking at it, if you have an SD or HD television, they always look the same. Just crisp, clean lines, and vibrant colors. I actually think it glows in the dark at night. The colors are so beautiful. If you recreate the shirt in Minecraft, I will send you a free shirt. On me. On him. Alright. We're going to make a Minecraft server and recreate these shirts pixel by pixel. Oh in large God. scale, it'll just be a giant ant. It'll take 20 years, so... And somebody will come burn them down, so... Free <laughs> If you guys remember when we had the Minecraft server, that was amazing. Yeah. That was fun. That was too much work. <laughs> that was fun. Was every now we had to go on, go on patrol. What's been destroyed? <laughs> Who came in and burnt everything down? Seriously. We had an amazing town, though. We did! Yeah. Well, come you never burnt down my stuff. I was, uh... Because you were off in the distance building fucking glass towers. Who's gonna burn glass? Me. <laughs> I miss it. Now I'm, I'm like feeling nostalgic. It's only been like, what, a year? I know, we had the Swedish guy who built Yggdrasil, the tree of the earth. Oh, yeah. Remember that? We had the towers and... Okay. Anyways. Uh, what? <laughs> I've been playing Diablo 3, actually. And, uh... I'm, I'm jealous. Oh? You don't have I that? still haven't been able to strike down the copy. Oh, seriously? Yeah, um, I've searched everywhere. Uh, the only place that have it is a uh, game. But oh, yeah. They're charging um, way too much for it. So, as in about 10 cent. I think it's uh, retails at about 35, and they're charging about 50 quid. 50 for quid, it, so. which is about $150. What? Yeah. That's bullshit. Due to the Jubilee tariff. Again. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not including Jubilee tax. 
Oh, scandalous. I know. Well, you know what, Daniel? I go, well, you know so what, loud. Daniel? If if our shirt business does well, we might be able to hook you up with a copy Ooh. of Day Blow Free. So yeah, buy a shirt so he can play. The game. Are, we get, are we getting a little bit too heavy on this? No, are we're we just joking. Yeah. It's not until we have the flashing neon signs. Buy our shit. We're just kidding. Yeah. No, we just want to. We just want to. You know, it's, someday make awesome robo business. So we gotta. You know, we gotta apply our stuff. But we do have. Good motives. It's, we have good it's motives. Not, it's not just purely money, money. Well, I, I just want to do crack cocaine. The best kind of crack. I know. Yeah. Well, you yeah, can, that's what I'm saying. Good yeah, motives. and in Diablo, you can combine, like, lower crack to combine, to make pure crack. And then equip it in your slotted weapon. Or sold. <laughs> Alright, we gotta wrap it up. Does he have nothing there anymore? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm more interested in. Yeah. Anyway. But anyway, I'm gonna be curious to see how uh, people react to Torchlight 2, especially the f after... Like, it was supposed to originally come out before Diablo 3, seeing that it offered a lower price point and a lot of features that mm -hmm. Diablo 3 was supposedly taken away. But now that they have to delay till after Diablo 3, I don't know how that's gonna affect them. But, you know, I hope they do well. Absolutely. Diablo 3 sold a fucking bajillion copies. Um, I was going to say, um, there's been quite a lot of negative reaction to it, so... Yeah, Diablo 3, it's just because of the problems with the online authentication. Mm -hmm. People have been spamming Metacritic uh, yeah. with uh, reviews. I remember it was down to 3.4 on user, yeah. out of 10 on user reviews. But I think people are being just petty at that point. I don't think, so, some of them probably didn't even play Diablo, they are just signing up to... Yeah. You know, join the internet hate machine, which yeah. is the uh, the common mm. thing. The internet's like a swarm of bees. We know that. The hive mind. <laughs> you know. Yep. People just jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. What's new? Yeah. But when Storeshot 2 comes out, we'll be sure to do a lot of coverage. I mean, all I wanted to say is that yeah. the response has been very encouraging. Even if our beta giveaway went so weird. Finally. I think it, mm. you know. It just shows how uh, it shows that people are interested. Most people interested, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, which we like. Because even I can't fucking run Diablo three properly on max settings. I think I have a pretty damn good machine, but I still mm. get lag. Like I can see how uh, a lot of people are left kind of craving, uh, you know, a cheap Diablo esque style game that won't require them to rebuild their entire computer. Yeah. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah. Um. So is there anything else, guys? Wrapping up. Yeah. So I, I think we've covered a lot. Yeah. So I mean, thanks, thanks for dropping, dropping by again. This is episode ten, our tenth anniversary. Woo! We're celebrating that with our, you know, our Swag. store launch and everything. So we hope you guys, you know, we love you. We love you. We love you. Show some support. Sure. If you got buy the shirt, I'm pointing. Sure. If not, yeah. just keep reading the blog. Keep reading the blog. It's that's fine with us. Comment, participate. Mm. Yeah, and drop us an email telling us how you like dick. Uh, yeah, how you like your dick. How you like dick at uh, Rachel at awesome right She's here. a specialist at that stuff. I know all about dick. And visit our store at awesomerobo.bigcartel.com. Next podcast will probably be filmed at E3, so look forward to that. Woo! Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I was gonna say. Uh, I was going to make a joke. Carry on. <laughs> British humor. Farewell. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>